And we're back for another installment of my ongoing series of reviews of the Mortal Kombat Legacy web series by Machinima. This one's Episode 7, Scorpion and Sub-Zero, Part 1. Long enough title there? Yeah. Uh, I have to say, this episode is probably the best episode I've seen thus far the series. Uh, it feels the most like Mortal Kombat. And I kind of wish they had stuck with whatever they did with this episode for the entire series. Um, even though this is not centered on a fight, it's the one that has the most feel. It does have fighting, It's which is more than I can say for some of the episodes, which have really nothing. It has a little bit of a fighting in it, and it's pretty decent. Um, it is pretty much entirely subtitled. Uh, in Jap it, they normally they're speaking Japanese throughout the entire thing, which is all right. I mean, some people I know really, really hate subtitling. I don't have a problem with that. I have a few DVDs that are in foreign languages. I can read. It's not a problem. Although I do have to say I don't speak Japanese, but they're speaking Japanese and they're they're kind of relaying uh, who Scorpion is. And when they're going to say you know, what he's known by, they go the Scorpion. I'm almost certain that is not how Scorpion is in Japanese. <laughs> it's a minor nitpick though, I, I must admit. Um, I guess the debate, the I should go over the basic plot. The uh, basic plot of this one is really uh, Scorpion is training his son, or his son wants to be trained to become a ninja. Uh, there's a little I guess somewhat of a conflict with that, where he's kind of indicating that I guess he does want his son to become, you know, a member of the Shirayu. Uh And the the Shogun is going to come to the village which he's preparing for, since he's the general of the Shirayu. He gets word that the Shogun has showed up early. He's on his way to see it, where he finds the fr Shogun's frozen corpse. Sub Zero then reveals himself, says, "Aha." Yeah, we're striking. Uh, and they begin to fight. And I have to say, when I was saying earlier about it feeling the most like Mortal Kombat, uh, Sub-Zero kicks Scorpion into the frozen corpse of the Shogun, and the, and the Shogun basically explodes. Uh, and then he goes over, and the Shogun's head's still there, and he steps on the frozen head of the Shogun and breaks it open. That's Mortal Kombat. Yes, it's kind of juvenile stuff, but that is the definite... That is what makes Mortal Kombat Mortal Kombat. The excessive amount of gore. And, yeah, it's not super gory, but still, it's the point. It's like something you would see from the games. Uh, <clears throat> costuming... There is something a little off about that, uh... The, uh, Scorpion's costume. I, and it's the face mask. I'm happy that they actually have a mask for them. You know, I'm, I'm amazed, actually, that they actually have a face mask on somebody here. You know, they didn't put the helmet on the Shao Kahn. They didn't have the the veils from Molina or Katana. Thank God they figured out. Most ninjas, this is not Naruto, most ninjas cover their face, at least in media, especially these two. But he does have this. He has his face mask, and it's got, like, a mouth motif on it. It is kind of a... I mean, I've seen samurai armor with this. Uh, I wish they did a little bit more skeletal-like, but they might do that for after, I don't know, in part two, you know, if he gets killed. Uh, Sub-Zero's looked alright, but overall, though, I have to say, despite that little complaint about the face mask looking a little off, it, the, the costume's pr pretty good for this series. It looks like it came from the game, it, or at least it was inspired directly from the game. You know, unlike Shao Kahn's, where you're like, where the hell did they get that costume ideal from? You know, this is what I was talking about with costuming and how it's not that hard. If they did more costumes that were f as faithful, I mean, there's variations from the game with his costume. It's not a direct lift, but you can see where it came from. Uh, another, I think, complaint that some people might have, but I, I really can't, is, you know, we saw... Maybe confusion if, if this takes place in the past or the present because, you know, we see only a Japanese, you know, what looks like a you know, 16th century Japanese village. Everyone's wearing kimonos uh, or ninja outfits. 
Uh, they're talking about having a Shogun. You don't, you don't see any technology. So you're like, is this taking place in the past, in the 16th century? The reason I say I'm not going to question that is... Well, I, I actually, I guess I am a little curious how they're going to do it. But uh, in the Mortal Kombat universe, there are, it's kind of weird how they set up Earthrealm. Uh, it's not directly like the real world, where yes, there are big major cities, but then there are other areas that are just like 16th century uh, Japan. So it's kind of weird like that. How even like our realm there still functions where there's big massive major cities and then other areas are like still straight in the 16th century. Uh, if that's what they're going for, I can't complain. It is an element from the games. Uh, if they're doing the passing, I could kind of see how that's going to work if they're going to kill off kind of both characters and have them be like internal demons fighting each other. I mean, you know, Scorpion becomes a demon basically. It's not hard to imagine he lives for a couple hundred years if he's a freaking demon. Uh, if he does that. Uh, the other complaint I have, really, and this was another minor one, is it does sound like a couple of the, uh, the actors here, they speak Japanese, I'm guessing, but it's not their first language, and you, especially the kid in this, you can really see and hear how the kid is really having to think about what his line is in Japanese first. Uh... Because I've seen, you know, I've seen performances done in Japanese, and it feels like these guys are, yeah, they might speak the language, or they might have just been taught pure Japanese, or you know, just the the lines. But I, I'm guessing they speak it, but they don't speak it that often. And it does kind of, especially the kid actor, uh, the guy that plays Scorpion, though, he he seems fairly competent with his uh, Japanese. Uh, the wife was, I think, kind of in between. Again, I don't speak it. Maybe that's I'm missing some nuances there because I'm just reading the subtitles. But that's how it, that's how it sounded to me. It sounded like they were really having to think what they were gonna have to say in Japanese first before saying it, uh, which is something natural if you're speaking a you know a foreign language, even if you speak it well. Uh, I kind of wish there was more problems with this episode, because then I could talk about more stuff. Uh, I have a feeling this is going to be a relatively short one on my behalf. Uh, we still haven't seen the conclusion of this part. And if the next episode is basically another 10-minute episode, and we have at least a 5-6 minute fight, which I'm hoping for, like we had in the Kano episode, I will be happy. Thrilled, even. Uh... And I really hope that they maintain this kind of uh, pattern, or this type of quality, I should I say. Uh, the radio one was kind of weird and out of place, and I don't know what the hell they were kind of doing there. It wasn't bad, but it was still kind of, what? Raiden in a Saint Asylum, yeah. This one, it's, this one feels the most like it's out of Mortal Kombat, and that's good. It's like this two-parter, and the very first two are the two that they actually feel like they put real effort into. Uh, and it doesn't feel like it's this pure backstory feeling. I would like these to be a little bit more connected. They were kind of doing that with connecting with the uh, the tournament ideal, but they were still like very basic backstory things. The these two we see much more character interactions, and let's face it, even from the games and such, we have not seen that much on the actual death of. Scorpion's family and how he died. Yes, there was Mortal Kombat mythologies, but you know, the canonosity of that game is a little, uh, and pretty much actually the canonosity of every game in Mortal Kombat is kind of, uh, uh, they change it all the time. So, but because this hasn't been done too many times, it actually is among the more interesting things to see, because it's one of those things that are always talked about in the games, but very rarely ever seen. And if they did more stuff like this, it'd be fine. I'd be, you know, it'd be really good, because we're just kind of being filled in on the backstories, without having this pure. This is what this character is like. So, if you haven't given it uh, watched it yet, you should because, well, it's pretty much as long as my little review here, so there's no reason you shouldn't have. Uh, I'm certainly looking forward to the next one. It looks like they got two guys that can fight too we didn't like I said we didn't see much of a fight it was a little bit but the, the storytelling was rather 
interesting. Characterization was rather interesting. And it actually felt like a Mortal Kombat episode. You know, it felt like it came from Mortal Kombat. It wasn't, you know, a rip-off of a Yul Bao film, or however you pronounce his name. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next episode. Hopefully it'll be good. Uh, hopefully we'll see how this series wraps up. I'm going to be interested on what they're going to exactly do, or whether they're going to really hope for a Season 2 of this, and then do the tournament. If they do a Season 2, they well, I'll get into that. When, I, when the series is over, I'll get into all that with a kind of a series overall wrap-up. But uh, signing off for now, I'll be back next week with uh, episode 8, Scorpion and Sub-Zero Part 2. See ya.